Help us welcome the irreverent reverend, your freaky deacon, the one, the only, Mr. Art Zealous. Hey, everybody! Oh, it's so good to see you all. Look at all those beautiful faces we got out here today. Good morning. Good morning, you venerable saints of art and craft. Whatever you create. You make something great, so let's make something great today. And friends, today's art project we take from concept to concrete will be the worldwide art event, Game of Shrooms, in which you make a pretty piece of mushroom art and then hide it out in the world for someone else to find. Don't that sound fun? Woo! Yeah, I know it do. And everyone has got something great inside, but a lot of folks feeling stuck. So, if you are bedeviled by blockages, if you got a creative consternation, you're gonna pick up that phone and you're gonna call the number down below. Because we're gonna make something great today. And I wanna say thank you to the Art Dallas Youth Singers. Boy, you kids are shooting up like mushrooms. I oh, I love you too. Oh, you kids, you're so good. I wanna say thank you to good old Agnes on the organ. Agnes is keeping us on time with her bleeps and bloops. Agnes, are you ready to play? Agnes? There she goes, there she goes. And folks, there is someone very, very special that I want you to meet. Someone who's as smiley as she is wily. Hey, Belle, come on down here, come meet these nice folks. Hey, hoot and holler for my wife, Belle. How you doing? 
Hey, darling, darling, what's your favorite thing about mushrooms on pizza? Oh, my favorite thing is when they forget to add them. That's right. <laughs> Folks, Bella here's going to take your call. She's going to keep you laughing in the chat room, and she's going to be the rock uh, every single day of my life. So how about one more round of applause for her? That's right. And I want to start us all off with a question, and that question is, what's your art today? Perhaps you got something great you're already working on every single day, or perhaps you're looking for a new project, like today's Toadstool Treasure Hunt. The Game of Shrooms, where you make that art and then hide that art for others to find, is two pieces of art in one. First, the mushroom art you make. Second, the fun activity you make for others to play. And I know that you can tell me, for every school child knows them, what is the art's commandments? Oh, why well, that's just the steps that anyone can follow to create any work of art. So ask me, and I will tell you, how do we always have what we need? Art resourceful! We are resourceful, that's right. Your talents are the most effective with the right tools in your hands. So grab what you need to make it how you want it. Today I'll be using my trusty doodle computer, but a pencil and a paper is all you need, and a nice cold glass of water, because the most important tool is you. So when I say go, you're going to have 60 seconds and 60 seconds only to run and grab any tool you want for any art that you are going to make. Okay, get ready. Get set. Hey, do you think that Papa Smurf grows those hollowed out mushroom houses magically? Or is Smurf home renovation largely the task of not filling up on bread? Go, 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 go! I tricked you. I tricked you. And to make these 60 seconds take forever, I will read boringly from the boring, boring bulletin board. Folks, the Game of Shrooms is a once-in-a-year, worldwide, hide-and-seek event for art that happens on Saturday, June 12th, 2021. 2021. 2021 as well. That's many, many thousands of years in the future. But also next Saturday. On that day, artists from all over the world hide their original mushroom themed works in public places and they give hints on social media for others on how to find them and then you get to keep them so to look at the map for art in your neck of the woods and to submit your location for your art on the global map visit yumfactory.com slash game of shrooms it's also available in the show notes and thus concludes our boring boring bulletin board for today. So if you want a link or have a bulletin for next week, anything artistic you want or need, text BORING to the number down below and trust in your community to provide. Now friends, welcome back. Now we have what we need. I guess it's time to make some art. So hey kids, how do we first find the focus to finish? We aren't devoted, that is right. So explicitly state what it is you're planning to make to keep your progress on track. Today, I'm making a toadstool treasure hunt to play with other artistic weirdos and make some mischief. And when I sit down my butt to work, I shall do no other thing until this hour is up. And as all of the best bar, all of the best art starts in the butt, a grand idea is nothing if you cannot sit down your buttocks. So friends, before we sit, before we dedicate ourselves to our art, let us therefore shake out that butt, shake its various wiggles. That's right, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, and sit. And with that act, my friends, you are now a serious artist. Congratulations. Takes a lot of people their entire lives. Hey kids, how do you plan to make something grand? Art dreaming! We aren't 
dreamy. That's right. We start by imagining the outcome of our wildest dreams. Free of all the limitations. Don't you get all worried on how you're going to make it happen? First, you got to think big. So before we doodle, let's you and me jot down some tiny little love notes. Huh? Real quick. Picture that project perfect and jot down all the dreamy little things you see. Why don't we say, Hey there, toadstool treasure hunt. Say, I sure do like your iconic silhouettes. And think about what you love and jot it down real quick. We got about two minutes, 15 seconds left. Say, hey there, toadstool treasure hunt. I sure do like your totally alien appearance. That's right. If you go in the woods and you find something grotesque and unidentifiable, it's only one of two things. It's either a mushroom of some description or it's confused extraterrestrial separated from his friends. It's one of the two things it could be. It's one of the two things it could be. Hey there, toadstool treasure hunt. I sure do like your countercultural appeal. That's right. Parents beware of the irascible mushroom. They'll steal your good sons and daughters straight away. Hey there, little toadstool treasure hunt. I sure do like your bad boy bona fides. That's right. Everyone knows never to eat a mushroom you find. Because, you know, that's the kind of poisonous you don't know till an hour later. It's not like it growls at you before it bites you. It's, it's already bit you. It bit you. I love you laughing. You got something in the chat? Who's somebody cracking wise in that chat? <laughs> Saint Breakfast Machine sure does love his toadstool treasure hunts biodegradable treasure container. Biodegradable treasure container. Saint Breakfast Machine, you're an inspiration. I cannot wait to see what you produce. All right, Agnes. Okay, Agnes is telling us we got one minute left here. So I'm going to say, hey there, toadstool treasure hunt. Sure do like your freedom to experiment. Yeah, you ever think about that? If your art collector is excited to get some mushroom art, they're probably going to be cool with you using every crayon in the box. So open her up. Got 30 seconds left. Let's close it out, folks. I sure do love your possibility of finding mythical and or mischievous fairy guardians. Oh, fairy guardians! And mythological and or mischievous, rarely one or the other, always both. Say, hey there, little treasure hunt. I'm sorry, little toadstool treasure hunt. I, I, what, you know, why don't, we, why don't we just give a shout out to the, the treasure hunt format? It's the best way to appreciate art where your car full of friends gets to stop for breakfast burritos. Yeah. And, and Agnes is telling us very politely that that is time and indeed our time is up. So, hey, hey kids, how do we know that we're making it rightly? Kids? Kids, you, you there? Oh, that's right. We are lightly. We only know by doing. So let our first actions in the making of art be quick and nimble and curious. I'm going to grab my pencil right here. And let's take a look. Let's take 10 minutes here, a little 10 minute time here. See what we can come up with. If we are lightly. Okay. I got my things I like here. I start with a little thumbnail just of a of a, a silhouette of a mushroom and um, just to talk about what we're, we're doing here. So so uh, my art I believe is going to be two-dimensional but there's no reason that your art has to be two-dimensional. I mean we looked at all the funny ways you can do art. You can do it as cross stitch, you can do it as sculpture very easily. I expect St. Shirley and St. Breakfast Machine of Glendale they're going to want to do because they got the, they got all manner of modeling clay and gesso and spray adhesive and and uh, suspended light polymer magnetic transparent aluminum. They got it all there. They got the art supplies that you and me just dream of, folks. And they're going to do something great. I can't wait to see it. But for me, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing something 2D. I've been, I've been doing a lot of 2D here, so, so uh, it it translates the most easily. So what I'm going to do here is, I think, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prioritize as my most important, or perhaps my most too important uh, aspects of this, the, the primary considerations, if you will. 
as the, the puckish nature and the treasure hunt format. Okay, so hear me out, hear me out. What I'm going to try to do then is I'm going to make I'm going to make this piece of art. I'm going to make it two-sided so I can I can make it uh, I can make uh, there be an initial read and a secondary read and so I can also I can laminate it because it's going to be outside. We're going to hide these so people can find them. So I'm going to my my concept, my puckish concept is that one side is going to be a sign that warns against uh, found art, and the other side will be a piece of found art. That's my concept. It's my concept. What do you think of that, darling? St. John Asante is complimenting you on how puckish, indeed, your concept is. <laughs> well, he, well, yeah, he's, he's Mr. Puck number one, so he knows. You know he does. He know he knows. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, okay. All right. Pretty puckish. Pretty puckish there. And uh, there's no getting around the silhouette of the mushroom. It's so recognizable. There's, there's, there is nothing else that could be. It's only a mushroom, and that's the end of it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna brook any additional discussion, my darling. You got something on your, you got us anything on? Nope, nope. Because it looked like you had something to say, but you, 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 ne you neglected to say it aloud, or perhaps you were in pain because of. Uh, it, it appeared that someone was biting your tongue. It could be nothing but a toadstool. It no could one could mistake <laughs> this for anything else. <laughs> Now, now, darling, a fact that you might not know, and I know, I know whenever I say this is a fact you might not know, that you know the fact, because you know all the facts that I know, and then some. But, you know, most of us believe that the, the, the round, colorful structure that we see, we see that we identify with the, the Mario, the classic Mario mushroom, like, we, we believe that to be the, the whole mushroom, when in fact that is merely the fruit of a much larger organism living underground, Made up of connected, connected filaments. Ain't that, ain't that a beautiful, beautiful thought, darling? Is that something you knew? You knew that already. I was not aware of that. You're, what? Fact. I thought a mushroom grew on a single stalk from a single bulb. I had no idea there was a network of mushroom roots under there. That's right. That's right. And what's more, what's more is that the, the late, great ethnobotanist Terence McKenna suggested that that possibly that mushrooms are responsible for human intelligence as we know it. Now that's a far out concept here, but his, his, his theory, his fascinating theory, which I, I do love, is that mushroom spores may not have originated on planet Earth. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? What evidence does he offer to support this outrageous claim? That's, you see, that's exactly the question you want to be asking there. What kind of evidence does he have? And the, the evidence is, very briefly, it's twofold. Uh, one is that living spores. Okay, Agnes. Agnes, I know, we know. Okay, five minutes left. Boy, that Agnes. She's, she doesn't let you get away with anything. No, five minutes hits and boom, she hit, hits those keys. So Terence McKenna, Mr. Terence McKenna, the, the venerable ethnobotanist, Terence McKenna, observed that living spores have been found and collected in every level of Earth's atmosphere. So there's not a too high for it to be living, right? In fact, like, we, we, we have fungus problems on our space stations. And added to this, mushroom spores are electron dense. Their structure is electron dense so that they can survive in the vacuum of space. And if you ever see that little like sort of like, like a, some of the mushrooms have like an almost like a dragonfly look to them like a little scintillating iridescence there. Well, that's uh, actually a very, very thin, like a, a, t a tiny, tiny, thin metallic layer, which could conceivably allow the, the spore to deflect Ultraviolet light. So it's got it's got kind of shields. It's got it's got shields up. And uh, the outer shell of the spore is the is the hardest organic compound to exist in nature. So all of these things combine to make a plausible case for why it's unique among the things that we find on Earth 
And uh, that suggests that it, it might not be earthly in origin. And indeed, if you were going to shoot something into space, that might be the way you do it. Isn't that an interesting, isn't that an interesting concept? It is indeed. So, Are, are um, you dubious of this? Go um, ahead. Mushroom store for could be an alien life form. No question. No question. Yeah. And he says, if you, you, know, if you were going to... If you were going to explore the galaxy, if you were a, a, a sapient alien race and you wanted to explore the galaxy, you could either put an astronaut in a bunch of vehicles and shoot them out in every direction, or you know you could just take you could just take uh, cell phones and shoot them in every direction. And then on the planets that can pick up and use the cell phones, you know maybe that's somebody you want to talk to. And on planets that don't know how to use a cell phone, well, what's what, it's just a burner. You don't need you don't need to get that back. And so uh, yeah, that's that's Terence McKenna's. Theory that uh, that they're uh, they are two-way communication instruments between between us and other intelligence life in the cosmos. Added to which, I, and you and I will disagree on this subject. I think they're delicious on pizza. <laughs> so, I'm happy to say that Saint John of Santee agrees with me. Saint John of Santee, you would agree with Bell on any subject. You are always you're always trying to take me down a peg. You're always trying to trying to trying to to drive a wedge between me and her. Well, it's never going to work, St. John. You and me, we got to make peace. we got to make peace, and we got to make art. All right, so uh, you can see my signage here. I'm going with, uh, uh, I'm working inside the constraint of, when we got about two minutes left here, I'm working inside the constraint of the, uh, the, the mushroom outline. I'm going to use it to, I'm going to graphically fill it up with a, a telephone and do kind of a, if you see something, say something motif. Um... And the, and the slogan I got here is, Found Art is Looking for Trouble. I don't know if that's perfect, but I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's funny. One, two, three, four, five, six. Things that make it good is that it's, uh, it's short. It's six words. It's short. Uh, things that make it good, too, is uh, found and looking have a nice symmetry. And uh, looking for trouble is a known expression. Found art is a known expression. Um, found is the most important word, and the second most important word is trouble, so there's good symmetry there. Okay, Agnes! All right, I'm running long. I'm, I, I gotta keep my, my attention on this, on this art and lightly here. And I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. But anyway, I think that's a serviceable slogan for now. And whether it is or not, we're just going to art lightly. We're going to get it down on paper. We're going to see how we're going to see how the world responds to it here. So, I've got uh, I've got blocks of text here. I've got uh, thirty scant thirty seconds remaining. I'm going to just try to uh, use my time here to block out the typography just a little bit more. Like, what am I going to do here? So, how does it fill the space? Because that that can actually be done quickly and lightly, and then I can use the the time that we set aside next, the thirty minutes where we art finally to. Um, to tease that out and see what we got here. Okay, we got 10 seconds remaining. Okay, looking for trouble. All right, so actually I'm gonna do a lockup of three lines. One, two, found art is looking for trouble. And Tom is up. Oh, well, we had a good run. We had a good run, didn't we? Didn't we? <laughs> well, that's okay. That's okay. Now friends, Congratulations, because now, right there in your hands, you got a tiny little baby work of art. And you say, I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, hey, Zell, this is the only little doodle I made. This ain't the real deal. This ain't, this ain't capital A art. And I say, you can give that doodle you just made to the friendly mycologist, that's a mushroom scientist, who's hunting in the cow pasture by your local dairy queen, you can give that to, to, to them, and they're going to look at it and they'll say, oh, oh, I think I get the picture. Yeah, I think I get the picture. And when you go away, if you head into the dairy queen, you get an Oreo blizzard. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Dairy Queen and the Oreo Corporation. So if you have any objections to anything I'm saying, take it up with Oreo, okay? Okay? Take it up with Oreo. <laughs> you give that art to him, you go away, that art's still going to be there. And that's, and that's what makes it real. So, friends, take a picture of your art. You've got to be proud of your art. You text it to the number down below. 
Maybe we can show it on TV. So, hey, hey kids, how do we make this art as good as can be? We are progressive. That's right. Great art is an iterative process. Making stuff and stepping back to look at it and making it some more. We ain't got to make it perfect if we can always make it better. So let's you and me shoot the breeze, keep some companies, and make it how we please. We've got some 30 minutes left, 29 minutes, 30 seconds left to luxuriate on the rich and delicious details. And I know that everyone is calling. They're trying to get through that number. And so, folks, I better get to work and answer that phone. Folks, the Creative Confessional of the Airwaves is now open. It is now open. That's right. So, please call that number with any artistic worry, big or small, and we will strategize your salvation. You have got crafting consternations. We have your artful solutions. And everyone is trying to call. So if you must leave a message, please do. Please don't, please don't let the stigma of leaving a message uh, get to you. Just leave that message. And if, if you're lucky, maybe we can get you on the air. Maybe we can, we, we can call you back. I mean, we're going to do everything we can to get as many people through here as we want. But everybody's trying to call. We're not miracle workers. Everybody's trying to call. There's only so much we can do. Okay, all right. So you can see my... You can see I'm going to art finally here. I've got a pretty good... Uh, so I, I really worked only on the signage side of this because I felt that the, the art side of it was going to be largely uh, kooky, booky, uh, fruity tooty, uh, abstract, surrealist, uh, lowbrow. So uh, what, what I'm going to fill that other, that other mushroom with, you know, that's just pure art. <laughs> I can't be taught. So I, I didn't, uh, I didn't try to, to get in there and play with that at all. But uh, let's go ahead and look at now look look at this and you know we're gonna we're gonna be getting we are gonna be getting folks calling uh, and right now they can't get through they can't get through because too many people are calling so we're gonna do our best to answer them as they get through in the meantime we're gonna make some art of our own we got we got 30 minutes here but it looks like for some reason it's paused at 2757 is that correct is that correct that's that's a funny kind of thing those countdown timers no accounting for those, those countdown timers. Okay, so uh, well, I'm going to keep an eye on the clock. It just means that you don't keep too close of an eye on that clock down there. Okay, all right. All right. Oh, it looks like we got a, we got a caller coming through. Okay, well, I'll take this call on the air. Uh, everybody, I know I know it's frustrating. You just keep trying to get, just Hello, keep trying to get through. This is St. Tabitha of San Onofre, and I'm calling because I'm an artist working in the medium of ceramic fish. I make ceramic fish for sale. At, uh, at ceramics places, porcelain stores, and, and tile facilities. Uh, a lot of people like to affix them to the exterior of their uh, Spanish-style homes. So, Art, my question for you is that I find a lot of inspiration in the work of other ceramic fish artists. How do I make sure that I'm not just straight up copying their designs? Thanks, Art. I, I listen to the broadcast on WPFM radio, uh, rebroadcast up here in San Onofre every single Sunday. We, we love you, Art, in my household. Um, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you. I'll take my call off the air. Oh, St. Tabitha, thank you. St. Tabitha of San Onofre, thank you so much for calling. Thank you for all your kind words. What a lovely call to, to receive. St. Tabitha, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, and... What an interesting medium for you to be working in. Ceramic fish. I, you know, I was not aware that there was a brisk trade in ceramic fish, but now, but now, you know, I've also not been to San Onofre. So uh, it just goes to show there's limitations. There's limitations to my understanding. Okay. Um, and let me also say, St. Tabitha, that the impulse you have to, to not want to copy another artist is beautiful. It's beautiful. That's a... That's a noble instinct within you, and I just want to praise you for that because you know there's a lot of folks that that just straight up that just straight up copy that it's easier it's easier for them uh, largely places that are, uh, are are in the business of selling things your uh, your uh, urban outfitters and if you've got a problem with me bashing urban outfitters you take it up with my sponsor or Oreo Cookies you take it up with them. And uh, so there's places like Urban Outfitters that, that like to steal from artists. 
Uh, and generally that's because they're selling those things that, you know, they're making the art that they sell and it's more something to sell than it is necessarily a work of art. So, so, uh, so allow me to compliment you firstly on the impulse which has you to, to steer, to steer clear of doing so in your own work that is respectful to your fellow artists and would that every venerable saint hold themselves to the same high bar as you. Bless you and thank you very much. The next thing, St. Tabitha, though, I want to say is that I find it very identifiable in how you're finding inspiration in the work of your contemporaries. You know, we all study the masters. Every artist studies the masters when they are learning how to make stuff. Everybody gets inspiration from all the other sources in the world, and that's completely fine. I mean, uh, they, they say... They say that originality comes from the obscurity of your sources, and, and frankly, there's quite a bit of truth to that. So what I would say uh, to your question of how do you enjoy the inspiration which nourishes you and your creative process, which is very legitimate, and we all participate in to some degree, while still remaining distinct from your competitors, and to, to some extent uh, respecting uh, respecting their work as original work of art and, and probably wanting to, to, to create your own in, in the, to the same standards, well, why don't you look at what they're making, not just what they're making, but, but all the things that inspire you, the actual fish, uh, other interesting things being done in ceramics. What about uh, heat tiles on the space shuttle? Not like mushrooms need them, but you know, what about heat tiles on the space shuttle? Stuff like that. Uh, find, find inspiration wherever you can and, and, and look at it, drink it up, like let it feed you and instruct you, and then put it away, put it aside. Sit down with your sketchbook, work entirely from a, a blank lump of clay. So you've got all of those things inside you. You know, we are all living quilts of our, of our, our, our inspirations and our, our sources. But if you put it aside and don't one for one it, if you, if you merely get inspired by it and then do your own version, it will invariably be, in most cases, distinct enough that there can be no question in your mind that, that it is yours. Indeed, you can, find, you can find a lot of inspiration by starting from something and trying to, trying to, to, to reverse engineer the thinking of the creator and when you get to a point where the decision that you would make is different than the decision that they would make, that's, that's when you have an opportunity to, to fully realize the art as, as something of your own. And isn't that a treat, right? Like it's so, much, it's so much finer to be able to look at something that was made by somebody you love and realize that at a certain, at a certain point you would make a different decision than the original creator made. Doesn't that really, doesn't that almost feel like you're talking to the person right there? That's an artistic dialogue. Anyway, St. Dabitha out of San Onofre, thank you so much for listening to the broadcast. Thank you so much for calling in. I, you know, your family, your family sounds like a great group of folks, and I, I would love to see what you create. I would love to see some of your ceramic fish. So you, you take a picture of that, you send it to the number down below. We'll show it on TV if we have time for it. We're going to try to. I mean, we got everybody trying to call, everybody trying to get through, everybody's trying to, to send these texts. So, I mean, we will do what we can, St. Tabitha. And in the meantime, hey, thank you for watching the broadcast. Thank you so much. It's just such, such a treat. Uh, thank you and, and good luck. Okay, folks, we got about 21 minutes left and 47 seconds here. Okay. All right. So let's uh, keep, keep working on this. While we, while we uh, continue taking your calls, and uh, you can see here, I'm, I'm. If you see something, I've got, I've got, I've set a precedent here with the size of the typography that I'm using, so it's going to want to be some thing as two different words, which is not a great solution because the number of letters is if you see some, so two, three, three, four, five. Okay, so it sort of forms a a, a, a a triangle with the apex at the top and the, and the base at the bottom. That's an intrinsically interesting shape, just based on the number of the typography. Because of the shape of the typography, you don't want to have the letter size to be too varyingly different from each other because then it will appear to be uh, mechanically resized instead of uh, hand-lettered, which is a less aesthetic deployment. 
um, something. It's not great, but I'm going to go with it anyway, just because um, some thing is a beautiful word on its own. And whenever you can hand letter the word thing, you should. Okay. Uh, and it's all stacked those a little bit more. Okay. Uh, hey, kids. How do we happily handle the hate? Art kindly! That's right, we art kindly. So, you know, if you see something, you're like, oh, I don't know how that looks. I don't know how that, I don't think something, what am I thinking about? That's a word that's never broken into two. What, what am I doing? Do I have any business preaching to these people? Unkind thoughts like that, directed at yourself or anyone else, is a waste of our precious resources. The more I perseverate on that question, the less art I have it in me to make and the less enthusiasm to do so. And old Scratch, old Scratch, he loved, he loved whisper those hateful mischiefs in your ear to deter us in our progress. We say coconuts to that. We say coconuts to that. So you can see I'm using the empty space here that it's going to be a mushroom on the other side. All right. Okay, friends, now we got a, a, a new segment coming up here, a segment called Sunday School Bell. And this is a segment in which I throw outlandish premises at my darling wife, and we watch, we watch on, we look on, agog and inspired, as she creates something out of nothing. Are you ready, my darling? I guess so. Of course you are. <laughs> All right. Of course you are. Naturally you are. So my darling... You have no idea what I'm about to say, right? I have, <laughs> have no idea. I didn't know that was the name of the segment it's or... Like mushroom on pizza. You ain't got no idea. No clue. Well, that's the fun of this. That's the fun of this is you ain't got no idea. And it's going to be great anyway. So, darling, you have 60 seconds to tell me you prefer dogs to cats without telling me you prefer dogs to cats. And go. You know, in my relationships, I just really like to be engaged with others that have no trouble expressing affection. Um, I really, I enjoy an interaction from someone who wants to make me happy. Uh, I like an ongoing dialogue that feels like it's mutual, where I'm aware if I'm being understood and I feel like I understand what's being communicated to me. Mm -hmm. um, I like taking long walks around the neighborhood with a, a stretch of material attached to my hand and maybe something living at the other end of it. It keeps um, your hand warm. It, it, well, it just gives me something to do with my hands. I tend to fidget, you know, and it's so I, if I'm if I'm walking around the neighborhood and I've got something, there's something at the other end of it. Mm -hmm. I like to throw things, but I don't like to go retrieve them. Uh, so I, I would prefer to have things that you know just brought things back to me without oh. me having to go and get them. So am, am I hearing here? I know you would never be so gauchous to say, but am I hearing here that you prefer dogs to cats? Well, I did not say that. I would not say that. That's not something that I that would say. That was a trick at the end there. I tried to trick you. I, I, <laughs> you I, didn't say. You didn't say. I didn't say, and I would not say. I love furry creatures of all shapes and sizes, and I enjoy my interactions. Folks, was I right? How how good she do with that? Okay, all right. Let's throw let's throw another curveball at her. Let's throw another curveball at her. My darling, could you in sixty seconds prove? That paint by numbers is the only legitimate art form? I absolutely could. Look, I want to say that their legitimacy requires that there be some objective standard for measurement. And so in order to determine that something has been legitimized, you have to know what it is being evaluated against in order mm -hmm. to give it legitimacy. Now, of, of all of the various art forms, most of them require the spontaneous creation of something that hadn't existed before. Mm -hmm. And so there exists no method for evaluating them for legitimacy. There are only subjective methods for evaluating mm -hmm. them, except for paint by numbers. Paint by numbers provides an outline, a guide, a legend, uh, a series of elements that need to be assembled in a particular way that can be evac objectively evaluated against a success metric that is defined in, ex in advance. Therefore, were I to embark on a painting with no guidelines, no numbers, no prescribed paints. When the painting was complete, I would turn to you and say, is this art? Now, you are art zealous, and so you do have the power to determine if something is art or if is not. But most people do not. Most systems do not. And so you just you get a panel me. of opinions that may or may not be valid and are subject to overturning at some later date. But if I showed you my and paint by numbers. time. All right, okay, hold on. 
But now we said is the only legitimate art form. So by 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 that standard, wouldn't uh wouldn't I don't know uh cross stitch be a legitimate art form because it has it has the opening for creativity but a very very uh prescribed order in which the colors have to go cross stitch my understanding of cross stitch and my exposure to cross stitch is limited is that while a pattern is provided thread selection and even stick selection can be left up to the artist whereas paint by numbers says you use these paints in these places so it's it's uh, cross stitch is legitimate but it's not an art form in your in your paradigm I'm just not sure. I think that there is more subjective opinion introduced in the world of cross stitch than there is in the world of paint by numbers. Uh -huh. Although you no raise question. an important question because I think latch hook assembly uh -huh. might qualify as a legitimate art form by the definition that I have introduced. All right. Okay. All right. Again, phenomenal work. I never thought about it that way. I guess, I guess. Paint by numbers in one sense is the only legitimate art form. Darling, darling, I got a question for you. Explain why people should pay not to eat corn dogs. Oh, well, all 60 right. 60 seconds. 60 seconds, go. The reason that people should pay not to eat corn dogs is because the desire to eat corn dogs is universal. The appeal of corn dogs is undeniable. Every people child and animal innately living creatures want to consume corn dogs however there are some living creatures that for whatever reason have specific goals short term or long term or ideals or objectives that will uh run contrary to their innate desire to consume a mm -hmm. corn dog sure. for instance someone who was interested in no longer consuming pork products the union death wish someone who was interested in achieving a certain number on a scale uh -huh. in a certain timeline sure for those people they have some objectives that run counter to their natural and universal impulse 20 seconds in, remaining in order to consume a corn dog and so therefore they need a strong incentive mm -hmm. to allow them to suppress their innate desire and prioritize their external objective oh and a financial incentive is a very strong Strong argument, and so if I were to pay a certain yeah. amount of money in order to not be able to eat a corn dog, that I would lose. If I did consume a corn dog, that would be enough incentive for me to suppress my innate desire and allow me to achieve my short-term goal. And Tom, God, damn, damn, you did it! You're three for three. You're three for three. Saint Breakfast Machine's mother would like to like interject that cross stitch is not an art; it's a craft. Oh, thank you. Thank you, St. Breakfast Machine's venerable mother. She is correct. It is a craft and not an art. And I owe you an apology. I'm sorry for filling your son's heads and your granddaughter's heads with a bunch of airy nonsense that don't make no sense. That ain't, that ain't how kids should be brought up. Hey, but you raised a hell of a good kid because he's sitting down with his daughter making art and I know this ain't the only day of the week. Good job. That's some good mothering you did. Huh. You set me straight too, so you know you know a scoundrel when you see one. Now mothering is an art form. Now mothering is an art form. Is that St. Breakfast Machine type that, or is that you saying that? That's me. It's That's not a crap. Okay, okay. It's an art. Okay, all right. Hey, coconuts, keep it down. Keep it down, little coconuts. All right, okay. We've got got uh, I th we we have reason to believe that this clock is now thirty seconds behind, but. Okay, so you see me still struggling with the typography here. And is this, strictly speaking, the best use of my time? Probably so. Probably in the grand scheme of things, uh, fetishizing typography is going to be the best use of my time and my energies on this sphere. Uh, but just in case it's not, let me attempt to make short work of it. And just again, a you... quick update, my love. Yes, my darling. The clock on the screen is not 30 seconds behind. It's about 12 minutes behind. I oh, set a 26-minute timer when it was. Oh, no. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my gosh. she got a computer brain. She got a... She's my rock. She does everything right. Everything I do wrong, she does right. And that's everything. That is everything. She's a miracle, folks. She's a miracle. How she got shacked up with a, a charlatan like me, I will never understand. And if she tried to explain it to me, I don't think I'd get it. I, like everyone, opened my heart to art. <laughs> Thank you, darling. I guess, I guess that shows that, that even a uh, scoundrel such as me has been redeemed. And hey, great work on that Sunday School Bell. You really, all three of those. I love this format. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I need to, like, because you, you could. You filled 60 seconds with refutations that were irrefutable. 
So I think I think what I need to do now is like I have to sort of 20 questions you where you're allowed to say one thing and then I debate you as you go just to make it more and more <laughs> More and more gradually difficult because I know you'll best me in every time, which is satisfying television. We also need to probably find ways to make it more specific to the making of art. Anyway, I'm, I could not be more delighted with how that went. You are a treasure. I think if we could get some audience interaction going in there, that would we, be a true delight. <laughs> you know, as soon as we, uh, we uh, get the expansion of our audience, then we're going to, it's going to light it up. It's going to light it up. Yeah, we should probably ask questions. Is there a question we can ask in the chat room on this subject that can be worked into this, this segment, do you think? Yeah, I think, I think perhaps that uh, whatever the parameters are for the debate challenge, yeah. that the audience could be employed to, like taboo, run with a buzzer. So if there are words oh. I'm not allowed to say or uh, points, flaws in the logic, uh, that the audience could help us. Well, the, the problem with that is is then you're going to have to be refuting it in the chat room even as you do so live on camera. Well, that's just added difficulty, right? <laughs> that's, just, that's right, darling. We're, yeah. we're, we're just creating the, the obstacle course. Yeah. Then um... yeah. you, don't, you don't buy a race car if you don't like to open her up, do you? No. Ah. Let's see what she can do. Let's see what she can do. See what she can do. Open her up. And, uh, yeah, well, cut back. Cut, cut back to Brett. He is fidgeting with typography. Oh, how how would it? Oh, how would we have predicted that? Okay, so again, like to to buttress my thinking as for why this is a worthy slogan, found art is looking for trouble. I kind of like it. It's I think it's a little bit found art. Uh, yeah, it's I think because we're not used to putting the emphasis on um, found art like you got to know what you're reading before you uh, put your emphasis there so it's i don't know if it's going to be the perfect fit on the ear but i do still like that uh the the book ending of found and looking and trouble and the first word and the terminal word being your load-bearing significances uh found art is looking for trouble trouble is the punchline there and it's a last word there so that has some comic comedy impact is looking uh, found art is looking for found art is looking is probably looking should also be emphasized in that same way but i'm i'm just trying to get to that trouble there so i'm not going to spend a lot of time emphasizing that so that's my thinking on the subject and that's how i i emphasize that typographically speaking for okay this is a little dangerous hand lettering here oh it's some some scavenger some dystopian some dystopian moppet is, is the one who lettered this Found artist looking for trouble. Yeah, looking really wants to. You know what? But we ain't got time for that. We have not got time for that. My darling, how many seconds did you say we had left? You've got five minutes and 58 seconds. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I just got to... The one thing I got to remember here. What is the one thing I got to remember? That's right. Art completely. Friends, when the distance to done seems impossibly far... Focus on your next steps and keep moving, as you know, the venerable Ambrose Bierce said of writing a novel. No, it was not Ambrose Bierce. It was uh, E.L. Doctoro said, writing a novel is like driving a car at night. You can only see as far as the headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. Friends, remember that to art completely, it is the doing that gets it done we have. Approximately seven, seven minutes remaining. Let's estimate here and say seven minutes remaining. But before we stop, let's see how much ground we can cover in that time. There we go. You can see me now turning my attention. The, okay, so the, the allotment of time here, for something that is ostensibly a mushroom-based work of art, the allotment of time has been largely on the other side of this. But again, the, the mushroom is going to be expressive and intuitive. I'm going to use the symmetry tool here. So, uh, you know, I, I only have to draw half of it at once um, and that will give me some nice mirror effects and then taken back to our criteria for success we had puckishness as one of those and uh, the symmetry tool in drawing is one of the tools that we have to uh, to indicate puckishness because bilateral symmetry is something we see in animals right and human faces and so when we see it uh, it it twangs something in us that says that's a 
that's got a personality looking back at us. So we're going to anthropomorphize this mushroom here by use of this bilateral symmetry, and that's going to give us some visual interest here, as well as expedite the making of art, because, you know, we got to move units, friends. we got to move those units. Got to get that art on the shelves. People can buy that art. My love, did you know that mushrooms are more closely related to animals than plants? Isn't that a fascinating factoid? Is that true? It is, it is true in the regard that uh, they, they, you know, quote unquote, breathe oxygen and they exhale carbon dioxide. Um, <laughs> like humans, rather, you know, uh, we did re the reverse of how we, are we, we expect to see our plants, and they contain no chlorophyll as well. Um, so I'm doing some grass down here. Again, I bet, I bet this thing, whenever you draw a mushroom, the important thing is that if you hold it upside down, it looks like a Frankenstein head and a Frankenstein haircut, and that's what we're doing here. And, uh... St. Breakfast Machine's Ma ain't got nothing to say about that. Well, St. Breakfast Machine has called out that he does not come to, to Sunday service for science. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. He, he doesn't come. He comes for reasons of love and love only. <laughs> we feel that love. We feel the love, St. Breakfast Machine. Shirley, give your pa a hug. Please give him a big old hug. He's a good guy. Heck of a good guy. Let's see. Okay. Um... we got here. Okay, why don't, we why don't we take a second here and we talk about this. Okay, so I gave you the link for the game of shrooms. It's uh, yum, yumfactory.com slash game of shrooms. You texted, you got that. If you, it's, it's also in the link down there below. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to make our art and then uh, we're going we're gonna to hide it. We're going to hide it in the world. And this is this is what they call a leave no trace event, which means that if someone doesn't find it, you got to go out and you got to you got to find it uh bring it back home. Which is is good. You don't want to you don't trash anything here. Kind of looks like a spider, doesn't it? I'm not sure I like that. So whenever you have something that looks too much like a spider, add chromatize on top. Boom. Problem solved. Look at that. Look at that. That's a that's an affable fellow there. Spiders don't have pupils. And then we got some side ones here, so you can really see it suggests the, the silhouetting of that is going to suggest that they're nodules, which come hemispheres that rise from the surface of the shroom. So it doesn't look so spider eyesy in this. And it, it, you can cheat it, and it looks like eyes too. It looks like watering puppy eyes rendered in the anime style. Okay. All right, again, this is going to be the flip side, right? So uh, one side looks like the phone, and this is what's on the back. So we're going to like have a warning, warning, found art is dangerous. And then if you look at it closely, you find an original work of art for you to take home. I'm going to laminate this. I'm going to probably put it on a little paint stick or something like that. Um, and i got to put it somewhere crafty. I don't know where that is. So what I do is when I, I'm done making my art, when you're done making your art, in addition to taking a picture and sending it to us so we can show it on the TV, which we cannot wait to do. We're looking so forward to that. Um, we're going to take it out in the world. We're going to, we're going to hide it. We're going to take a picture of it up close. We're going to walk 10 paces away. We're going to take another picture of it. We're going to walk 10 paces further than that. We're going to take a third picture of it from approximately 20 to 50 paces away. And that's going to reveal, and that, that alone, those three images there, are going to give us a delightful little scavenger hunt contained contained very easily. So you know you know where it is. Those pictures are going to be attached to geodata probably if you're taking them um, on your phone. So you can then post on social media. Use the the hashtag shroom or whatever it is. You'll see it on the site. They'll tell you. Um, use the hashtag so and submit submit your mushroom art on on uh, yumfactor.com/gameshroom. So it'll be on the map. So folks will be looking for it. And then you just tag it in your social media. And, you know, maybe on day one, you, you do the, the one from 50 paces away, saying this is where the art is. On, on you know, day, uh, day two, maybe you do it from 10 paces away. And day three, maybe you do it real close up. Or maybe, maybe if you don't want to stage it out in days, that you just, 
you, t you know, post all three on your social, tag them up, let folks know where they are, and then folks are going to see that and they're going to, oh, what's a game of shrooms? What? There's an original work of art from St. John of Lakeside? From Santee? I got to go find that. Now, now St. John, he's one of the original, he's one of the original scavenger scoundrels too because he, he's a geocaching man, so he knows, he knows the art of hiding something in plain sight so that it can persist and be a delight for a stranger. You see what I'm talking about here? Like I've got a little bit of anthropomorphous here. I'm putting a few things in the middle um, because those are also impactful in symmetry. Um, and you can see how quickly it fills up here. And I've got some, I've got some spirals, which uh, uh, often signify uh, a crazy perspective, a uh, crazy or delightful perspective. Um, so that's what I got cooking here. I got just probably two minutes left on this beauty. Two minutes only. There we go, got two minutes. Two minutes only. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ain't that pretty? Okay. I'm oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Fixed. Woo! <laughs> Good thing I fixed that so quickly. This is live TV. You can't make mistakes like that on live TV. No, you cannot. No, you can't, and we don't, and that is one of the best things about our professionalism, I would say. My darling, what's the thing that you love most about our professionalism and, and the composure? I, what I really like about it so much is uh, how lightly we hold it. <laughs> <laughs> True enough, my love. True enough. All right. Hey, yeah, we're getting pretty close here. All right, so we got, got a minute here. Oh, no, we got a minute. Ignore the clock down below. Okay. Yeah, I've got a, a few other things here. This is about all I'm going to get here. This is about all. So if you see something, say something. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then on the opposite side of that, it's going to be the mushrooms you can cut away if you want. There you go. And just a few more flourishes. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Look at that! Look at that! That ain't, that ain't too shabby at all. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and call that time. I mean, the, the clock doesn't reflect it, but I actually took the, every single second I was permitted there, and I know that you did as well while you're keeping company. So, hey kids, how do we grow when we're done and we show? Art proudly! That's right! We art proudly! You are better at making art than you have ever been and you're still getting better. Do not apologize for being where you are. Do not let perfect be the enemy of good. Everything you love, every work of art, every movie, every song you love was started from scratch. That's right, they started from nothing. And your very favorite artists, well, they were once a beginner too. We want to see what you made. Take a snap of your Toadstool Treasure Hunt, send a picture of your art to the number down below. Maybe we can show it on the TV. We're still going to try to do that. And hey, kids, how do we ever get better and better? Would you say? You had to speculate on that? Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Kids, oh, they're shy now. Those kids, are they got shy now. It's a, oh, there they go. Art Daily. Oh, that's right. Friends, I am asking you to make a pledge, I am asking you to cross your heart for art. That's right. I'm going to ask you, will you join me in making art every single day? I want you to go to your calendar, and I want you to circle today and say, today is the day that I start making art. It is today is the day I start making art every single day for the rest of my life. And you say, oh no, oh no, what if I forget a day? Well, let me tell you what. After one day, after two day, after three day, three of those days, you got three circles in the row up on the calendar. You're gonna look at that. It's gonna be real, real hard for you to miss the fourth. And you do the fourth, and you do the fifth. And pretty soon, you're gonna have a wall calendar that's an unbroken chain, an unbroken chain from today, all through the rest of your life. And every one of those days that you made art, and it ain't gotta be, 
It ain't got to be a big production. Even if some days you only get five minutes where you sit down and you focus and you work a little bit more on whatever you're working on. What matters is you, you, you do it in the aggregate. It's the doing that gets it done. So as long as you keep moving, that's all you got to do. You're going to keep getting better. You're going you're gonna to do more with what you have than you thought ever possible before when you are daily. Ain't that a beautiful sentiment? Ain't that a beautiful sentiment? Now, friends, back in the old days, we would all leave this tent. We'd have a big pancake breakfast, some artistic fellowship. You'd line up at the griddle, drink some strong coffee and some fresh squeezed juice. You know, but well, we're still in quarantine for now. So, you know, now, for me and Belle, Sunday noon, that's our honeymoon. That's right. That's right. Belle, come on up here, darling. My darling, did you make a lot of friends in the chats? Oh, it's always so good to see all of those venerable saints, especially St. John of Santee and St. Breakfast Machine and St. Shirley. Thank you for joining us and keeping us company and oh, opening you, your heart to art. Thank you so much. You are our rocks. We, you know, when this tent gets a lot more crowded, you're going to have a special place. You're going to have a, a special seat. That's right, you will. In the front pew. In the front pew. That's right. Darling, you know what we're making next week? No, I have no idea. Why, well, next week, we're making... Tiny homes in a giant fruit. It sounds vaguely familiar. It does. Yeah, we were supposed to make it this week, but we we bumped it so we could do the Toadstool Treasure Hunt because that's happening on Saturday. I wanted I'm you to have so something glad special. We did. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, and hold on. Who's this? Oh, it's our little dog, Coconuts. Say hi, Coconuts. How you doing, Coconuts? Oh, what a sweet little fella. What a sweet little fella he is. All right, folks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making art. We're going we're gonna to get your art. If you text it to us, we're going to show it on the TV. If we didn't get through this week, we're going to show it next week. And we're going to see you right here at 11 a.m. when we make Tiny Homes in a Giant Fruit. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Happy Sunday.